the FBI in peace and war. Another great story based on Frederick L. Collins' copyrighted book, The FBI in Peace and War. Drama thrills action. Tonight's story, Protection Copy. Come in, Mr. Larkin. This is Agent Reynolds, who's working on the case with me. Hiya, Mr. Reynolds. Hello, Mr. Larkin. Sit down, Mr. Larkin. Oh, thanks. Say, you any relation to H.M. Reynolds over in the Treasury Department, Mr. Reynolds? Uh, no, I'm afraid not. No, huh? Well, there's a kind of resemblance in the face, structure-wise. You know what I mean? Okay, Mr. Larkin. Now, Say, you boys ever read this book on face structure? It's a real help in our racket. <laughs> I beg your pardon, the profession. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Stevens, I interrupted. Our time is limited, Mr. Larkin, so if you don't mind... Sure, sure. Go ahead, ask me anything you want. First, just a couple of statistics. Okay. Occupation, owner, Larkin, confidential service. It used to be Larkin Detective Agency, but that wasn't classy enough when I moved to Wellington. A home address, wherever my hat is, but mostly the Riverside Hotel in Wellington. Okay? Okay. Now you want to know about my technical man, Stanley Ecker. Where do you want me to start? As a member of the profession, you know what we're looking for, Mr. Larkin. Supposing you tell it your way. Okay. I guess that's best. Well... Probably the place it ought to start, from a professional point of view, is where Stanley came back to the office with a recording he made at the hotel. This one? Yeah, he got it up in room 1216. It's between Joe Manson and this guy in the state license department, Carl Haley. Yes? Well, Stanley came back to the office with the record, and he played it for me, like we always do after a job, so I can see if he got everything he ordered. When it was over, I said, just like I always do... Hey, that's okay, Stan. Very good quality. Thanks, Mr. Larkin. Lock it in the safe till this afternoon. Joe Manson's coming over. He'll want to hear it. Yes, sir. And, uh, Stan. Yeah. Manson will probably give you a nice tip. You can take it. All right, I will. But he doesn't have to do that. He'll want to when he hears this played back. <laughs> He's got that guy Haley right over a barrel. He'll be feeling real good. Yeah, Haley wasn't very cautious, was he? I'll say he wasn't. What an idiot... You think any guy that went up to a hotel room to talk to Joe Manson would look for a bug? Yeah, you'd think so, but uh, why does Manson bother? With a recording? Yeah, yeah. Sounded like he already got what he wanted out of Haley. Sure, but this is what he calls a protection copy. Anytime Haley tries to back down on his end of the deal, all Joe has got to do is play this record. Oh, I see. He's a smart cookie, this Joe Manson. You and I should have in a year what he makes in a week. Yeah. Half of it, even. I wouldn't mind even having half of what he gave Haley. <laughs> yeah, it was something, wasn't it? Hmm. 20,000 bucks like he was handing a 10 spot to a head waiter. <laughs> well, I guess it was worth it to him. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Uh, you want me to lock this in the safe, huh? Yeah, yeah, he'll be in here around 6. You want to stay and run it off for him, or uh, you got a date with that doll of yours? I got a date, but I'll call her. She can wait. <laughs> sure. Never be on time with a doll. She'll think you're serious and want to marry you. Yeah, I guess that's right. <laughs> they all want to marry you sooner or later. I'll be real late this time. So he was late for our date, and I said, what kept you, Stanley? Uh, just one question before we go on, Miss Jelvin. Did you know the nature of Mr. Ecker's business at this time? Well... Sure. In a way, I guess I did. What do you mean, in a way? Well, I knew he worked for this detective agency in a confidential capacity, kind of. Could you explain that, Miss Delvin? No. Well, that's all he told me. At least up until that night, that's all. But he did ultimately explain. Huh? Go ahead and tell us in your own way, Miss Delvin. Oh. Okay, well, like I said, he was late for our date, and I said, what kept you, Stanley? And he said there was this big shot he had to play a record for, and I said, okay. And where are we going tonight? And he said... We're not going anywhere. We're going to stop and talk a while. Oh, Stanley, that's what we always do. <laughs> well, tonight will be different. We really will talk. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. Couldn't we just for once go dancing or something? Well, supposing we did, where would we go, huh? Well, the dance palace, 
Or Dreamland? Oh, when I drive over to Washington and go to the Patrona Club for the supper show? I'll stand. Cut it out. I'll tell you what'll be better. We'll get ourselves married and take a trip to Miami. How would you like that? Oh, if you think that's funny... No, I don't. I don't. I mean it. How would you like to quit that beauty joint and have some dame do your hair for a change, huh? Let's go to Dreamland, Stanley. Would you quit if I had, uh, 20,000 bucks? You've been drinking anything? I asked you a question. For 20,000 bucks, I would go to Zanzibar, and I don't even know where it is. How could you get $20,000? What do you care how? It couldn't be legitimate, could it? Uh, I shouldn't tell you anything. You'll have to sometime. If I go to Miami or something. No, I shouldn't. Where would we stay in Miami? If I tell you, will you swear well, not... Well, naturally. Okay. <clears throat> Did you ever hear of Joe Manson? Kind of. He's in rackets or something, isn't he? He owns three of the biggest gambling joints in the country. New Orleans, Philadelphia, and Jersey City. Probably takes in four or five million for his cut alone. Wow. Well, he wants to open up a roadhouse outside of Wellington. All he needs is a liquor license. Oh, he'll never get it. He will, if Commissioner Carl Haley says so. Yeah, And Commissioner but... Haley already said so in room 1216 of the Bayview Hotel this morning. Manson gave Haley 20,000 bucks cash. And I've got a copy of a recording of the whole conversation. You mean... Manson is a client of ours. We wired the room for him. He wants a record of the conversation to use if Haley ever gives him trouble. So where do you fit in? You don't get it? No. Now, look. I take this copy to Haley. I play it for him. Then I say, Commissioner, if you don't want to lose your job with the state and end up in jail, you better buy this record. The price is 20000 bucks. The same twenty that Joe Manson gave you yesterday. Stan, you wouldn't do that. Why not? It's an opportunity that comes once in a lifetime. Besides, Haley's a crook, isn't he? Accepting a bribe like that? <laughs> You understand, Mr. Haley, that anything you say to us could be used in court. Yes, I know, but you've got that record. You know about me taking the money from Manson. What's the good of not talking? But I swear I didn't know what was going to happen to Ecker. All I thought... Mr. Haley, do you have any idea where Joe Manson is now? No, I haven't seen him since that night he came to my house. Could you tell us about that, please? Well, yes, I guess so. I'll take it down, Dave. Go ahead, Mr. Haley. Well, it was just after this fellow Ecker came to me and played the record. And he said he'd sell me the record for the 20000 I got from Manson. So I didn't know what to do. And I stalled him by saying that I put the money in the bank, but I'd give it to him the next day. And then when he was gone, the only thing I could figure was to call Joe Manson. And Manson came to my house, and I told him what happened. That kid's a pretty smart cookie, isn't he? Well, what do I do, Joe? Do I have to give him the money? He played the record for you, huh? Yes, and believe me, if I'd known that you had that room wired... I always take down important conversations. Gives me protection. But nobody ever pulled a stunt like this before. You could have trusted me to carry out my end of the deal, Joe. Yeah, I know. I mean, after all, I said I'd get you the license. Question is, how many copies of that record did the kid make? What? Copies, copies. If he's got one, maybe he's got more. What do you mean, if, even if I gave him the money? You don't think he'd stop with you. He'd come to me next. The government boys have been looking for an angle on me for a long time. They could put me away for a nice stretch for handing you that money. Well, what are we going to do about him, Joe? First, we're going to find out how many copies of that record he's got. Then I'll take care of him personally. Well, what about the money he wants? Let him come over here tomorrow, then give it to him. Give it to him? Yeah. 20000 Yeah, but let him give you the record. At least we'll have that one. Now, wait a minute, Joe. You'll get the money back, Carl. How? Never mind how. You give it to him. You'll get it back. Are you sure that's the smartest thing to do? I mean, after all, $20,000... Carl, sometimes you act like just what you are. A stupid, thick-headed, political punk. Look, I don't have to take that kind of talk, Joe. You don't have to, but you will because you want to keep that money. Now, you do what I say. Give the kid the money. I'll take care of it after that. So I gave him the money, just like Joe said I should, and I swear I don't know what happened to him from that time until I read about it in the papers. You don't know where he went after leaving your house? No, I don't. I saw him get into his car and drive off, and that's all. You don't believe it? Look in that envelope. Is it really 20000 Stan? Go ahead, comment. No, I couldn't. It's bad luck. Okay, don't. Oh, I never saw so much money in my whole life. Neither did I, but I'm going to see a lot more like it from now on. Aren't we going to Miami? Sure we are. Miami, New Orleans, maybe even Mexico. We're going to blow that bankroll sky high. 
All of them? Sure. When we need more, we'll just come back here and get it. For Mr. Haley? Uh-uh. For Joe Manson. I've uh, saved a copy of that record for Joe, too. Stanley, I don't think that's very smart. Why not? What's 20000 to a guy like Manson? I thought you only had one record. I made three. Haley bought one, and the other two are in those packages. What are you going to do with them? I'm mailing one to a friend of mine in Washington. He'll keep it for me. You put the other one in your room till we get back. My room? Mm -hmm. I don't think that's a good idea. Why not? I don't know. I just don't. Okay, maybe you don't want to go to Miami either. Stan. Now, you put it in your room, Alice. Nobody will bother it there. All right. But it'll just make me creepy having something like that around. All right, so you'll be a little creepy. You couldn't think of any place else? Nope. All right. When are you coming for me? As soon as I mail this and pack my things. An hour, maybe. I'll be ready. You better be. I really can't believe we're going. Well, we are. Okay, if you say so, but all that dough, it's just too good. Something's bound to louse it up. Mr. Manson, what, what, what are you doing here? Waiting for you. Give me the 20,000 bucks that Carl Haley just gave you. What 20,000? Come on, come on. I'm not going to fool around with you. I could give it to me. I don't know what you're talking about, Mr. Manson. Nothing in the bedroom, Joe. Okay, come here, Frankie. Yeah? He can't remember about the dough that Haley gave him a half hour ago. Come on. Hand it over. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's better. Is it all there? Yeah. Don't count it, Frankie. Okay. Now, where did you put the other records? What records? Why don't I give them a going over, Joe? Save time. I want to do it the easy way. How many records did you make, Ecker? J just one, Mr. Manson. The one I gave to Mr. Haley. You're a liar. Honest, that's all I made, just one. I, I, I shouldn't have made that one, but I needed the dough, Mr. Manson. The doctor says i got to have an operation, you see? Where's the other record? Stop! <laughs> where are they, Ecker? I only made one, Mr. Manson. Uh-huh. Okay, you take care of them, Frankie. Meet me back at the hotel. Right. Mr. Manson, you got to believe me. I only made one record, but if it hadn't been, I needed the money. Sit down, Sonny. I, I, I know it would have been smart to make a couple of records, but I, I didn't think of it at the time. You're going to sit down? Do I knock you down? I'm not as smart as he thinks I am. Honest, I'm not. You ask me, you're a dumb squirt, Sonny. But you're going to be a lot brighter before I get through with you. Believe me. I guess that's all we'll need you for now, Miss Delvin. Thanks for helping us out. That's all right. Thanks, Miss Delvin. Okay. Well, you think we can pick up Joe Manson and Frankie Reese on the strength of this? Probably. Let's go over it just once more. Where are those notes? Yeah, they're right there on your desk. Okay, let's keep them handy. Now, how do you figure it? Well, we're sure of it up to the point where Ecker got the 20000 from Haley... Drove the girl to her room and said he'd be back in an hour. Right. Now, he turns up in less than an hour, looking scared to death. Tells the girl that trip will have to be delayed. Picks up the record and meets another man out on the street. The girl identifies this man from pictures as Frankie Reese. Uh-huh. Next, this guy in Washington, the friend Ecker mailed the record to, picks up a paper, reads what happened to Ecker. Then he identifies Reese. Looks all wrapped up to me. Yeah, I guess it is. Sure. Haley told Manson about the shakedown. Manson figured his turn was next. Reese is Manson's hatchet man, and he does the job. Yeah. I just wish we knew what happened from the time Ecker and Reese left the girl's apartment. It was two days later. Yeah, two days. Why did it take as long as that? <laughs> What do you mean, two days? He mailed one of the records to this friend of his in Washington. Won't get there till day after tomorrow. Okay, you stay with him every minute, Frankie. Then you get that record. And after you get it, you take care of him like I told you. Do you understand? So that's what he said. After we get the record, I should take special care of you. He don't want you to get lost on the way back to Wellington. You didn't have to come with me. You got what you want. Yeah, I know. 
Take that next dirt road to the right. Why? Because it's a shortcut, that's why. I don't think a dirt road... Do like I tell you! Sign says Leesville. That's not the direction we want to go. I don't believe in signs. Leesville is east. We want to go... Why don't you shut up? We want to go where I tell you to go. Well, you certainly can shoot off your mouth, you know that? Well, all I meant yammer, was... Yammer, yammer for two days straight. I sure would be glad to get you off my hands. Well, that suits me, too. Talk, more talk. I never heard so much talk. Well, you could have left me in Washington. I would have been glad to, believe me, only I got a job to do. Pull over, park under that big tree there. What for? Because I tell you to, that's what for. I, I don't, I don't want to stop now. I'd like to get back to Wellington. You better do what I tell you. No. I look sunny. I put up with an awful lot from you. I'm driving straight through to Wellington, whether you like it or You're not. You're doing what I tell you. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, we will see. We'll see, wise guy. Look out, you idiot. Let go. We'll Let's see go. if you go into Wellington, wise guy. Uh. You jerk. I think, I think I'm hurt. Yeah. Get up. You're on the record. Ah. Uh. Get up! You want to break that racket? Maybe we better get a doctor. I really think I'm hurt. You won't need a doctor now, son. Yes, I do. I think my leg... I said you won't need a doctor. What's, what's the idea of that? The idea is you're never going to pull any shakedown on Joe Manson or anybody else again. That's the idea. No, don't. No, please, give me a break. You got both the records, I swear. I only made three of them. Now, listen, you got to believe me. Sure, I believe Please, you. give me a break. Talk, talk. Look, look, I've got $2,000 in the savings bank in Wellington. We can drive to Wellington and get the I money. I shut see? up. Please, please. Ah, talk. Not even let it talk. And we're going to book you for murder, Reese. Go ahead, book. I never heard of this guy, Ecker. And you weren't here in Washington on the 4th of last month when Ecker picked up a record from his friend John Williams. I wasn't here in Washington. This is your gun, Reese. Sure, it's my gun. You took it off me last night, didn't you? You admit it's your gun. Look, Matt, I, I got a permit to carry that. If you want to go to my hotel... We know you have a permit. Well, okay, then. Reese, here are the bullets that killed Stanley Ecker. Our lab says that all three came from your gun. You're going to have to prove that in front of a jury, mister... We intend to. Okay. Now, how about me making a phone call? You want to talk to Joe Manson? Maybe I do. Okay, Manson, come on in. Hello, Frankie. Hiya, Joe. Don't talk to them, Frankie. They're just bluffing. Okay. Sit down, Manson. We're going to play a recording for you. And then we're going to ask both of you a few questions. <laughs> evidence presented by our bureau, a grand jury indicted Frankie Reese for murder and Joe Manson as an accessory. After a trial, both men were convicted, Reese receiving the death penalty, Manson life imprisonment. Carl Haley, pleading guilty to a separate charge of accepting a bribe, was sentenced to one year in prison. Our files are closed on the protection copy. Tonight's story, Larry Haynes played the part of Stanley Ecker, and Joan Loring was Alice Delvin. This radio dramatization for the FBI in Peace and War was written by Louis Pelletier. These programs are produced and directed by Betty Mandeville. All names and characters used on the program are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This program is based upon Frederick L. Collins' copyrighted book, The FBI in Peace and War. And the broadcast does not imply endorsement, authorization, or approval by the Federal Bureau of Investigation. We pause now for station identification. <laughs>